There's a, there's a method to it. It isn't even all written up yet. This is a registration mark, upper right hand corner, so I know where it's at. Okay. The secondary air will enter through this hole here, and it comes up then the side. Okay. The shape of that doesn't really matter very much, and I didn't want to cut it in all the way, so I just put on a little notch and three other holes. I can tin snip up here, there, there, and bend it around, and I create that hole. But if I don't want a hole, if I want to use this piece uh, totally, I just leave that the way it is. Oh, these pieces here are water jet cut. Water jet is water with little tiny stones in it, uh, semi-precious stones in it, which will cut through steel. And the advantage it has over plasma cutters and laser cutters is that the other two are hot and the things can fuse together and the different types of water jet is really a very sophisticated way to go. So I am making them this way in the United States because I need a number of units so that I can go and do a demo and show mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Okay? Overseas, a, a, a person trained to use tinsmiths. I don't want to call them a tinsmith. Okay? You need a tinsmith to sort of supervise, but they would come in and they would cut these out. We have some tools, one's called a notcher, and there's and the snips and stuff. And so out of it, this is exactly a one foot wide strip of metal. This is this is actually flashing. You can buy it at the hardware store. Mm -hmm. It's like 30 gauge, maybe this is even 31, 32 gauge. But it's real thick. I don't need it thick on that. The weight to hold all this stuff up is through these legs now. I want it to be lightweight. I'm having this part in it. Okay? This piece is there we go. I am able to take two of them and using some of these holes which I have up in here, I can join, I can make it taller almost to match that other size. Mm. Why am I doing that? Because I am an experimenter. <laughs> and I want a taller one. And I'm not going to go to the to the um, uh, water jet cutting guy and have him do something which is going to cost me an arm and a leg when I can have him make ten of these all mm -hmm. the same and then I can make them any size that I want. So Modular. I'm encouraging you who are going to be experimenters, you know, these, are, these are options that you can do. But this one is made to fit into there. All right. The inner cylinder, and I'm, I'm still working on the bottom of this thing, but the, the inner cylinder here, empty, all right, this is stove pipe, or you could buy air conditioning pipe and stuff like that, with no modifications on it whatsoever, just cut it to the right length that you want, and I put in four holes that would receive these four screws. This is the piece that takes all the heat. Who was asking me about the lifespan of it? You were. The flame on there is 1100, 1200 degrees centigrade type of thing. The pyrolysis front is 450, 500. The difference in the impact on the metal is enormously different. The lower temperature, the metal withstands it very nicely. The higher temperatures, the metal can become glowing red hot. It weakens the metal and stuff like that. So the lifespan of the metal, which is only exposed for a fairly brief period of time while the pyrolysis front is passing it, okay, that that metal can last a long time. We don't have enough experimentation out to say what is the lifespan of one type of metal versus the next type of metal. So we'd like to come into the shade and we can all just sort of step back in. Mm. We're all admiring uh, Janet's wonderful fire over there. All right. So the uh, uh, so that those are the two cylinders. The upper two the the two horizontal plates, what I call them horizontal plates, are made like this. Like that. Right. Uh, one is there and one is here. Okay. The top plate. Yeah, 
use this for. I have two pieces. Oh yeah. This piece here. I want to be able to have, in this case, a I could want it at five, I could want it at four, I could do it at seven. This is actually uh, comes out as eight and three quarter inches, so you can squeeze in an eight if you want it to, all inside of this same piece. I get my, who's, who's going to Africa? We're going to line you people up with the trip to the hardware store, and you will buy one of these. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it goes on the edge like this. And you just crank it down, and it's going to then give you an edge like this. Oh. We knock out the center, but the center is on there, so we can we can put a, a circle on if we're going to use different for the diameter of what we want for the. Mm -hmm. We've got variables. We're going to use different sizes of designs on this off the same piece. Right. So they are then going to fold these things downward like this, and some of them are going to get folded all the way back underneath because. I don't use them. This yeah, is where the secondary air comes in. Yeah, yeah. Some of them will be down like this. And that's what, there will be four of those down, and that's going to hold that piece onto it. The gap that is between the, the fuel cylinder and the top horizontal piece, that gap has major influence on the into the secondary air. The gaps are easier to make than drilling a bunch of holes. But that's Okay, just two different ways of, of doing mm -hmm. it. Okay? So this particular piece of metal is then going to give me that job. The virtually the same piece, and I'm changing this design on it, this is going to give me the lower one. Again, I push through all the pieces so that you can see how this pieces are coming down. And they're on the outside. They're snug fit. You can put on a band, though. You can hold on a wire. You can put a screw through it and stuff like that. And that just, just sits on into there. Is that stove, is that stove pipe like wears out? Is that something that I'd be likely to replace just by unscrewing it? Or is the exterior metal going to probably wear out first? No, no, the inside one where I'll the stove pipe, yeah. mm. So the, uh, 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 and so you, you're going to then have this second horizontal piece again cut basically the same way. The idea is the flat pack pieces made by water jet or made in a stamping chunk. Here it comes out. I don't have $50,000 to buy the dies and do this type of stuff, so I'm not doing that yet. You can get some of them with smaller foot powered partially stamping and those little cut certain segments and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. good, that's coming along. But the other end is do it manually. Doing it manually and it's being done in Uganda. Mm. And you will buy your flat pack pieces from Uganda. Or if you want to, you line it up with me and you can put it in your suitcase and uh, That's what I want. You can, you'll learn how you're learning how to make it. Yeah, now. yeah. I mean, we're talking about this, and you, you gotta have the screws. I'm trying to set it up as a sustainable business, so that then people like yourselves can do it. And so you want you don't want to have to start from scratch. You want to carry it flat and then assemble ten of them yep, over there. Yeah, yeah. I already know people who can do this there. No, so just, we can do this. Yeah. Okay. So then when we got, when they tested these first units that you've got, the lady says, I love this stuff. Or someone else says, oh, I'll use it. I mean, it depends on yeah. so many different Depo factors. It does, okay. yeah. Cultural, we don't know all those okay. things, yeah. The type of food, there's variations with it. Right. Mm. So you've got to get the buy-in from the people that that's what they want to do. And you do that with five or ten of the stoves. And then you get, you place an order for 50 of them as flat pack. Right. Okay, fine. Well, now we're really up and we're rolling with it. From Uganda, you said. We could do that. Yeah. We're starting to make them in Uganda. And in Kenya. And I want them made in Congo. And I want them made in Nigeria. But I don't want you to start there with, how do I get to this point? Yeah. You know I mean? You just want to walk, get off of the plane, mm -hmm. and within a day or two, and you go in with a tool set, and you're going to know how to do it, and these men 
most of the men are men tinsmiths, and they will say, wow, what can you, you can do a lot, okay? We, then, when we're eventually going to be making a manual in those countries, we start out with a sheet of metal. It's all important. Now, Africa does not have steel mills except South Africa. Mm -hmm. okay? But it's important metal. And then you're going to put a center, you get it cut to the right size. This is exactly one, a, a foot, 12 by 12 inch. Actually, it's 305 millimeters by 305. But it could be 300, which is just fine also, or even 295. It doesn't matter. It does not get hung up on some of that kind of detail. So this is the great flexibility that we have with this, with this product this way. All right. yeah. So they put a hole in the center. They put that piece of metal over the top of a board that has a little pin sticking up in it. And now that metal will spin on that. Okay? And with a hammer and chisel, if that's the side, they will, and the board's underneath it, they will, and it's pre-marked, we have a way of marking it from a, from a template, and they will, chip, 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 like that, with a hammer chisel, and then they'll spin it over, and they'll, they'll do the next one, and they come up with them all in the same spacing. This, if you want a detail, technical detail, this, what I'm developing, is on 100 millimeter centers, mm -hmm. meaning, it's like putting up studs in a wall and stuff right, like right, that, right. okay? So 100 millimeters comes out nicely. Again, it's another long topic if you really want to know all about it. But the, um, uh, so that will then match up with this piece here, which has exactly seven of these tabs that will come out and fit into there, and they will all be the same. When it comes time for construction, they take the... They've got this made into the cylinder. They've got a one of the slots here. Okay, it's coming up through there. You bend it over a hammer, a rock. Okay, uh, and and it then going to hold together like this one over here. Oh look, the fire! Stop. It's still going, the same as ever. Are we really worrying about? I mean, let's, let's take care of the baby. You know, let's. Uh, uh, you know, these are other duties that we got around the house instead of being in there with it, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that it's performing very nicely, thank you. And uh, uh, when, you're working, when you're working on it, that's how the plane changed its positioning. And I'm actually, I'm going to go right away to the high. Talk about the power. How? What is that? A battery pack? Yeah, sweet. Uh, two AA batteries. Oh, in there. sweet. Uh, you could hook it up to, uh, you know, small electrical outlets, and there's different ways of doing it. Okay. So, the, uh, so that's important for Africa, huh? Mm -hmm. Power. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool thing, but if you can't power the fan. Show. We have a bar. It is magic. We have a piece of rebar in the bottom because we want to leak air underneath to get inside of it. Okay. I would like to arrange it a little bit more sophisticated with a, a little bit of a gap uh, to come into the center of it and stuff like that. But okay, it's okay. Have to look at it. Okay. Keep your hands away. I've got mine. 